हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस वीडियो इज फॉर क्लास एट चैप्टर थर्ड दैट इज सिंथेटिक फाइबर्स एंड प्लास्टिक राइट बेसिकली दिस चैप्टर कम्स अंडर द कैटेगरी ऑफ केमिस्ट्री एंड विल बी स्टडिंग इट दैट ओनली सो दिस इज नथिंग बट इन कंटिन्यूशन ऑफ द चैप्टर्स दैट वी हैव स्टडीड इन सिक्स एंड सेवन स्टैंडर्ड इन सिक्स स्टैंडर्ड वी बेसिकली स्टडीड अबाउट द नेचुरल फाइबर्स सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू माइट भी रिमेबरिंग अबाउट वी स्टडीड अबाउट जूट एंड कॉटन दैन इन सेवन स्टैंडर्ड वी स्टडीड अबाउट द एनिमल फाइबर्स बेसिकली वी स्टडीड फ्रॉम अबाउट सिल्क एंड वूल राइट सो continuing further uh, this year we have basically synthetic fibers so synthetic fibers as by name you can understand they are nothing but uh the artificial or you can say man made fibers right so starting on this chapter basically we have to understand what is the definition of or what is the meaning of fibers they are nothing but a thin long and a thread like continuous strands right uh, which can be basically spun into cloth or paper plastic or whatever it might be right so basically uh, the, as far as the internal structure is concerned of synthetic fibers they are made up of a chemical substance which is called as polymer so name itself suggests that poly means something which is repeated or you can say many many and mer basically means uh, um part right so basically they are uh, nothing uh, like there is a single you know singular unit is there mono uh, monomer which combine together repeatedly and they form a long strand of polymer and the process by how uh, like the monomers combine together and form a long chain that is called as polymerization that is many monomers will combine together and result in the formation of polymers so the polymers basically or uh, there is a polymerization basically can be of two types either it can be linear or the cross linked so moving on uh, here you can see in the diagram that they have given so linear basically means something which will be in a line like structure uh, they will uh, the monomers will be joined one after the other and cross linked basically means along with the uh, row wise you can say they will be joined in column wise also as given in the diagram right so uh, classification of fibers is concerned basically fibers are of two type that is natural or you can say synthetic natural we have seen the example cotton silk jute and wool and as far as the synthetic fibers are concerned this year we will be studying about rayon nylon polyester and acrylic right and many many more are there right so synthetic fibers are basically obtained from the petrochemicals like uh, the crude oil which is there so by the leftover products we are doing the uh, chemical processes or processing is basically is basically done and we are getting those fibers right so moving on the types of synthetic fibers first one we'll be studying is your rayon uh, so rayon uh, now the story starts is like it is a substitute to silk right uh, previously uh, we can say uh, rayon uh, silk is was very costly in current day also like uh, you can say the cost of silk is quite high so this was made as a substitute of uh, silk right you can say a cheap alternative for silk right and uh, it is being made uh, with the help of uh, uh, cellulose or you can say the wood wood pulp so it is not called as completely synthetic fiber it is called as semi synthetic fiber because we are making it from the natural substances right and uh, it has a properties which basically resemble you can say your uh, a uh, silk like uh, it is very strong and absorbent it doesn't uh, uh, it might be uh, shrinkable or it might stretch also doesn't melt on heating uh, it is quite shiny in appearance right and the best use for this is like uh, many of us uh, uh will be having in our, in our house will be bed sheets that will be made up of your rayon right and uh, carpets basically you can see in our houses right and the gauze bandages you can see the basically uh like once you get injured right uh, after cotton what we are putting is called as gauze bandage you can say and then next fiber comes is your nylon so nylon has a very uh, long story it goes back to around uh, 19 18 19 something like thick that only so it was basically the first uh, polymer synthetic polymer that was being made and uh, in the initial days it was basically used for making stockings you can see the european people so uh, inners uh, like how we have our thumb wear and all right but later on they realized it was quite uh, uh, you can say strong and it was very light actually so during the course and after 10 15 years they realized that it can be used for making uh, parachutes and it was heavily used uh, for making parachutes during the world war 2 right and the properties uh, the name itself suggest like it is quite strong and elastic weight is very less and it absorbs less water less water so it is easy to wash actually you can say and uh, uh, many of the items in our household right day to day items that we won't be knowing are made up of nylon only basically the same way right uh, we make are made up of nylon because it absorbs quite less water than uh, the in making a ropes uh, the classical use uh, then we can say in toothbrush right and for making sarees and dress materials you can say which are of a much cheaper quality but quite rigid in their strength right the next comes basically your uh, 
एक्राइलिक सो एक्राइलिक इज समथिंग यू हैव टू रिमेंबर लाइक इट रिजेंबल्स योर वूल राइट एज फार एज रेयन वॉज देयर इट वॉज योर सब्सिट्यूट यू कैन से फॉर सिल्क सो एक्राइलिक इज बेसिकली सब्सिट्यूट फॉर योर वूल राइट एंड इट्स प्रॉपर्टीज अगेन आर सिमिलर टू वूल यू कैन से इट इज क्वाइट लाइट एंड लाइट इन वेट एंड स्ट्रॉग इट इज सॉफ्ट एंड वॉर्म राइट एंड इट डजेंट रिंकल और यू कैन से राइट एंड ऑल्सो रेजिस्टेंट टू द एक्शन ऑफ वेरियस केमिकल्स and the best part of all these synthetic fibers is like that they can be dyed in multiple colors right uh, so common you can use you can say as we are saying it is a substitute for wool is like it is making for uh, used for making sweaters blankets and track suits and all uh, like and dentures like the people uh, who are having some um, uh configuration issue in their teeth they go for the dentures right uh, and bulletproof grab also bulletproof gloves also and the other name which are quite famous for acrylic are basically orlon and your acrylon so last come the synthetic fiber is second last fiber is your polyester so polyester uh, as a name itself suggests instead of using the word monomer they are being basically made up of uh, you can see ester units right and the polyester use is like something uh, it can be uh, mixed with wool and along with cotton uh, for making poly wool or poly cotton right uh, Uh, which are again used for making clothes and all so uh basically you have to understand it is something which is heavily heavily used uh, like and you can say the mostly used uh, items right uh, for example for making textiles you can say cheaper clothes and uh, and the, you can you can use it uh, it is heavily used in the countries where uh, it is quite rainy like for example in sweden in our book also it is mentioned uh, like in the rainy season uh, it doesn't they doesn't absorb much of water and they easily dry off right and the last fiber is basically your spandex and uh, spandex uh, you have to remember for its elasticity right and it's not a polymer only we say we say it is a co polymer basically uh, it is uh, having two monomer units uh, first is your polyester and the other, other one is your polyurethane and the common name uh, with which it is known as it is known as lycra um, so basically because of its elasticity is used for making leggings for girls um, you can say you'd have seen that those peculiar clothes uh, though that uh, wrestlers or your uh, your pti is really putting up so right uh, basically you can say uh, or basically by the gymnast people they use right uh, the, these clothes basically get attached to your skin very easily so generally in speaking the as far as the advantages are concerned uh, like they are very less expensive right first of all that we have to understand they are quite cheaper as compared to the uh, of which we are using those as substitute like might be or animal fiber or a plant fiber so they are much cheaper and they are uh, more durable apart from that they are easily washable uh, resistant to wrinkle and all and apart from that moth proof right but disadvantage is its concern is like they are highly inflammable uh, they doesn't burn rapidly but they melt on heating so it can be uh, severely um, causing injury to people person who are wearing it and somehow if they get into any sort of accident or that um, and the other part is like they cannot be worn during the month of heavy summer because they get attached to your body and they doesn't absorb water or moisture thereby uh, making it quite uncomfortable right so next comes the topic there is your plasticity plastics uh, and plastic again you can say hey, they are something like <laughs> the word plastic itself basically is come from the word plasticos uh, in the greek word that is uh, which can be easily molded or shaped again and again so it is uh, the property of plastic by which uh, virtue of which it can be changed by heating into any specific shape is called as plasticity right um, basically they can be made by either by linear polymerization or by your uh, cross polymerization right so depending upon the thermal treatment or their uh, stand against the concept of temperature they are classified into two categories either they can be thermoplastic or they can be thermostats right so thermoplastic are basically the one uh, which uh, when heated right they easily get uh, molded or they easily melt easily but as far as thermostats are concerned they are uh, uh, highly durable to the effect of uh, you can see the temperature and linear uh, polymerization is basically found in thermoplastic that is easily breakable and the cross polymerization is basically found in thermostats uh, examples for thermoplastic are basically pvc polythene that is uh, basically carry by used for making carry bags and all and uh, the as far as the use of thermostats is like bakelite and melamine bakelite is something which is basically used for making your uh, uh, switches and boards switch boards and all and melamine is something which is found in the utensils uh, handles uh, that are found in your basically kitchen so plastics properties are basically divided into four categories that is their reactivity light and durable and the effects of flame and the last is conductivity so as far as reactivity is concerned they are uh, least reactive to, to, to the effect of water and air so you can say they are uh, less corrodible uh, less corrode uh, get less corroding in nature and can be used for storing chemicals light in weight less expensive so can be used heavily for uh, in day to day items so effects of flame is like they are highly inflammable uh, they burn easily and conductivity wise you can say they are uh, 
very poor conductors as far as thermal conductivity is concerned so we can understand the concept of bakelite that is why uh, sorry thermal conductivity you can say melamine like uh, effect of heat is less uh, that is in the utensils it is being used for making handles and all and as far as electrical conductivity is concerned we can say the bakelite is there which is used for making switchboards and all right uh, then last lastly moving on to the impact of plastic on environment you can say like uh, being non biodegradable in nature uh, they are extremely uh, harmful for, to the environment so they should be used less and all and uh, various basically various actions are being taken by the government to control uh, uh, the level of plastic being generated in the uh, level of our environment so certain things are like basically we can do on our level is like uh, firstly we can use the uh, that is limit the use of plastic bags and all then we can say uh, when we are <clears throat> disposing of the waste in a house there should be a proper segregation between the biodegradable and non biodegradable waste uh, that concept of 3R should be used that is reduce reuse and recycle and uh, it would be quite uh, astonishing for you people to know that in Sikkim uh, the I think uh, the use of plastic bags has been banned by the government right and uh, nowadays in the malls and all if you go right so they'll charge extra for you uh, they'll charge several bucks for uh, basically for getting the carry bag so just for promoting that the people are getting uh, carry bag from their house so that's it from this channel.